All right, y'all, so this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a while. This is a walk around tour of my Lexus GX460 as a video production rig and a camping and overland rig. Let's get into it. So some of the big highlights from the Lexus that I chose versus something similar like a 4Runner or even a Lexus LX570 uh, is uh, one at a time, the price. The market value for the GXs were a lot lower than a comparable 4Runner. That was like the main big thing. But the more that I looked into the GX, the more that I found that um, it really checked off some of the boxes that I kind of wanted. The v a big thing and the interior quality and dampening is like pretty next level once you sit side by side in a 4Runner versus a GX. So I was looking for something that had enough space for all my camera gear um, that looked presentable enough to pull up to a big shoot, commercial shoot or anything like that and something that could do the job and also in case I need to get somewhere like this for a shoot, this will get there no problem. So my whole thesis was to be as efficient, effective, and also cost efficient as possible without compromising on the quality of the parts and my usability, right? So for me, I needed something, things that can be quick deployed, things that are actually useful and things that I'll actually use. And this wasn't an overnight build. This wasn't like a SEMA one month build. This was over the course of about two, two and a half years for me to figure out the parts that I actually wanted, discover all the parts that I wanted and get through all the maintenance parts first before I start modding. So we'll just work our way from, from the front to the back. We have these Delta Series Custom Ray 10s and the Falcon Wild Peak AT3W. So these are the stock 4 size actually. The stock GX size is uh, 18s, <laughs> 18 inch wheel. So the stock GX 460s came with the 18 inch wheel, but I decided to go down a size to open up a little bit more options for the off-road wheels. So these are 265, 70 by 17s. Um, and these are just stock 4 size. And the reason I went with those is because I didn't want to get a whole new spare tire carrier just to carry a spare. And I really wanted to carry a full size spare just in case of <laughs> anything going on. Got five wheels and tires and it all fits in the spare tire compartment, just in the stock compartment. So next up, we've got suspension. Decided to go with the Dobbinson's IMS uh, two inch lift. I forgot to measure before and afterwards, but it feels like it might be a two and a half inch lift actually but I didn't want to go any higher than that. I wanted to keep the, the load floor of the cargo area low enough for me to just still load in things pretty easily. So next we have the Southern Style Off-Road Frame Sliders. Um, this is to give myself a little bit more clearance whenever we're off-roading and uh, protect the, um, the actual body parts and the doors of the vehicle. So next up we have the 270 degree awning that swings all the way out and covers the rear tailgate area. This is from Overland Vehicle Systems and this is the only one on the market that checks um, the price point and the quality and also the sturdiness uh, boxes that I needed. So for me, I didn't want an awning that I would never use because it's so hard to use, right? So this deploys in less than 30 seconds or so, packs up easily, and it's about, it's a little bigger than a normal one, but it's perfect for me because of how easy to use. So I actually end up using it a lot more. And then in case you couldn't tell, um, I have something up on top of my roof. This is the Inspired Overland clamshell rooftop tent. This is the version one. They just came out of version two, actually. That's pretty sick. But this one I got because, uh, again, price point. This is on Facebook Marketplace for 900. So for a clamshell rooftop tent that's super small, as well as actually being really functional, that price point is pretty unheard of up until this, this tent came out. The biggest selling point for me outside of the price was actually the size. So when it's closed up, it's only um, about four inches thick up top versus some of the over there tents that you've seen probably around that stick up maybe a foot, foot and a half off of your vehicle. And for me, that didn't really make sense because it limits so many places where you can actually get into like uh, parking garages or like other things too. Not to mention the fuel economy hit. This checked off all the boxes, perfect for my height and under at five foot five plus one other person maybe. Um, but it does get tight after that. But if you're taller than 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, I'd recommend getting the XL version. This is the normal version. Or just wait until the version 2 comes out because uh, that looks a lot better. But definitely recommend this one, this company. But I would highly suggest going with the XL version uh, for a lot more space. A lot of stuff, basically everything I have back here is uh, from a company called Bison Gear. They make a lot of stuff specifically for Toyotas and Lexuses. Their stuff is just super high quality. And I've seen some stuff that other people have used over here that do the job, but it's really satisfying once you see things that are actually made for your vehicle. Let's talk about my favorite thing first. So we have the drop down table right here. You've probably seen it before. This is one of my favorite things. This makes everything so handy, super quick, doesn't rattle, comes with the cutting board, expand the space, set up your laptop, camera gear, set up everything here. 
And I still have storage, OEM storage, where I keep, uh, when I'm camping, some pepper, which they made a salt, salt shaker thing for here, and uh, my knife set over here. Um, normally I would just keep the first aid kit in here too. And then this paper towel holder from Harbor Freight. This is where the OEM spare tire storage and stuff goes, so uh, tools go. So the next thing from Bison Gear is this um, roof shelf. So this clamps on directly onto the third row pull handles uh, in the back. And so no drilling required. This also pulls into the um, all the, the OEM stuff, so it's super tight. Doesn't shake and it gives me a lot of extra organization and storage space up top. For emergency stuff, uh, got my poop shovel, starter kit, table, some spare tools, and other emergency stuff here. And then you can also hang a bunch of stuff. So got my light, uh, fire extinguisher, my dirty sponge, and uh, hanging my stove over here too. Keep it kind of convenient, ready to hand. And then we'll go to the fridge, which my friend graciously gave me. This is a Euphemy fridge. This I'm pretty sure it's just some knockoff one, but the Dometic one is about $1,000 or so. And that's a lot to throw for a fridge that you'll maybe use a couple times. But um, this on Amazon is about 200 or 300 bucks, which is a lot more palatable. Um, but got lots of storage space. It's a little awkwardly spaced out, but it does enough to where you can store enough food for two people for a weekend easily, maybe even three or four. And got a little extra storage space over here too. But this is the main compartment over here. We have the water jug, seven gallons on Amazon that I love using because it's square. Over here is all the kitchen essentials. This is Tristan's um, kitchen essentials in this HDX tool box thing. And this uh, trunk organizer from Haytrip on Amazon as well. This just kind of helps me organize some things. I've got <laughs> tonight's ramen food. Um, and this is where I store mold tools, uh, first aid kit, some other essentials in here. So the next thing that I really want to do to this is take out the third row seats. These are power folding seats, so they are forever stuck in here until you obviously delete them. So the 470s, the earlier generation, the third row seats came down from the sides, which uh, I really like because you have another like six inches of vertical storage that you can utilize versus this, so you're cutting down a lot of space here. I don't know if it's possible, but I'd love to do a forerunner second row seat swap because these ones are heated in the back which is nice from my passengers but uh it takes up a lot of space and doesn't fold down flat so the four is the seat folds up and then the back rest goes down so that'll make a flat surface area and hopefully open up a lot of vertical space there's nothing really different outside of the uh, exterior and some of the mechanical mods the interior is basically the same because it's pretty good from the factory um, the only thing I have is the Jackery 1000 that Joyce also graciously gave me um, sitting in the passenger seat so I can make sure everything's charged and charging. That'll last me a, a good while depending on your usage, but just to run a fridge, it'll definitely easily run uh, three days without charging. But um, most of the time we're going to be driving the vehicles between campsites and exploring. So what I'll do is just plug it in, charge, and then it'll last like for nights. So now that I've got a lot of the maintenance stuff done and all the necessary mods, now it's gonna start tackling some of the aesthetic mods. I wanna do a blackout package on this, blackout all the chrome, and then do some bumper cuts up the front and the rear. And then from there, maybe just add, uh, start adding some lights because that's kind of cool. And I didn't think I would want some lights, but then I saw some other cars with lights and then look cool. And now I want some lights, so that's next. But other than that, that's it. Thank you all for watching.